you can get detailed preview of your pull requests by AI. This AI gives you a full description of exactly the things you did in this pull request, making it much easier for someone who is reviewing it to see what's actually going on in this PR. After the description, there is a full review of your PR and there AI is checking if you have any relevant tests, if there are some possible issues with your PR and your new code, and are there some security concerns. And of course, that's extremely valuable information that you need from your PR. And my favorite part are these PR code suggestions. Those suggestions are not only for some repeatable code or something like that. There are four categories, enhancement, maintainability, security, and best practice. And all four are extremely useful. For each code suggestion, you have a score from one to 10, and the bigger the number, the more relevant it is to apply that suggestion. This AI is called PR Agent and it is created by Codium AI and you're probably interested to see it, how it works in the real world. So that's why I'll create a pull request on my OrgDev website and we are going to see exactly what is PR Agent going to say what should be fixed in that PR. But first, let me show you how to implement it quickly on your GitHub repository. And if you like this content, like this video, show me some orcish love. It's really easy peasy to implement it. You just go to their GitHub repo. I'm going to leave you that one in the description below. And you go to their installation guide. That leads you to their website. And then you choose GitHub. This is the option I always choose because that one is really the easiest one for me. So everything we need to do is here to copy this entire PR agent YAML file. So that's basically the GitHub action. You just copy this whole GitHub action and you go to your project, you create a GitHub directory inside workflows directory and then prAgent.yaml file. And here you just paste everything that you get from this page. And there are a couple of options that you can do more if you want to do it for only for specific releases for live or something like that. And then you need your open AI key. For the open AI key, you need to create an account on OpenAI platform openai.com and you go to your API keys and just create a new API key for you to use it. Keep in mind that you need to have money on your account before using it. That's the new rule from OpenAI. And of course, don't share with anyone your API key. And next thing you need to do, if you go to the documentation, you can see that you need to go to your repo and put this OpenAI API key inside of your secrets. So that one is also easy. You just go, so this is my repo or the website, and I'm going to settings. After that, I'm going to secrets and variables and then actions. So here, here is my OpenAI key and you just create new repository secret, put here OpenAI key like this and here just paste your API key here from the OpenAI API. And that's it. After that, you don't need to do anything else. You just have to create a PR and Codium AI PR agent is going to automatically give you suggestions and everything that we talked about in the beginning of this video. So let's create that pull request. I created a new branch and it should be here. Here it is, feature memory game page. So what I did basically is I just moved all the memory game logic from the page inside the memory game component. So that gives us a lot of code for Codium AI PR agent to work on. And I hope he's going to give us a bunch of suggestions for this code. So I'm creating a pull request right now. And after this, Codium AI should automatically just give us all the suggestions and everything. As you can see, he's working on it now, running PR agent. So everything is working automatically. You don't have to put some on off button or anything like that. 
And there it is, the PR agent finished successfully, it took around 60 seconds for it, and I even got emails that it's finished, so let's see what we got here exactly. So first thing is the description. We refactor the memory game page to use a new memory game component. That's 100% truth. And we created a new memory game component that encapsulates the game logic and UI. Again, I couldn't say it better. And we updated the features index to export the new memory game component. That's also the thing I did. I added into the index TS the new export for the memory game component. So it's easier for me just to import it through that index. And here we can check for each file what is exactly also changed. So for the page, removing the memory game implementation, imported memory game component and simplified component to render memory game. Then we had the index TS where we added the export and memory game where we moved the entire logic. So the interesting thing here is that it is not saying new memory game component is created with memory game. No, he said moved memory game logic and UI into a new component. So this AI knew exactly that this logic already existed and it's just moved to a new component. That's pretty impressive. And now if we check the next thing, that's the reviewer guide. So here estimated effort to review two relevant tests, no security concerns, no, and the possible bug. So we have a possible bug. That's great. Ensure that the memory game component is properly integrated and functioning as expected in its new location. Since the logic was moved, it's crucial to verify that all interactions are working. Okay. I tested that. That's okay. It's not really a possible bug. It's just like, uh, manual testing and refactoring validation double check that all dependencies like image and button components are correctly imported and that's also okay so this is now the thing that this PR agent is seeing only the pull request code it's not seeing like the entire picture so he doesn't know if this image is coming from the right place and that's okay and now the most important part, and that's the PR code suggestions. So we have four suggestions with one being a 10. So that's a possible bug. That's not good. Avoid potential memory leaks by clearing timeouts in use effect. I already see this is mistake by me probably. So to prevent potential memory leaks, clear the timeout. Okay. And here, as we can see, I'm not clearing the timeout in this use effect. And that's obviously really a possible bug. So this one, this is necessary to avoid effects running after the component has unmounted. And this is something I haven't seen. So this is a great improvement for my code. Let's check the next one. So next one is the enhancement. Enhance accessibility by adding descriptive labels. And that's probably for the images, yes. So consider adding accessibility features such as area label to the cards for better accessibility. Yeah, these are also something that developers are usually forgetting. I mean, this is not some like super important website where I have a lot of traffic, traffic but again, it's really good to follow like these suggestions and to have everything tip top. And I'm also going to add this stuff to my memory game component and the score of this is nine i'm not sure if i would put a nine to this but okay and the next one is improve performance by memoizing the deck generation and look at this this is like golden suggestion from this ai and this is really a good thing i was not thinking about it use memo is really great for this part of code and it's definitely going to improve performance with deck generation. And last thing is to improve maintainability by handling dynamic styles through dedicated function. And for what is that? Replace the direct manipulation of styles for card rotation. Oh, I see. It is moving the rotate 180 to get rotation class to create some kind of function that is going to give us rotation classes and not just put it raw like this. So that's also, maybe it's not a seven, but it's okay. It, it's a good suggestion 
again and that's the most important thing and that's it we got our full pull request review by ai and i'm really curious tell me in the comments below would you use it on your projects I used it recently on a real project and I gotta say it was really an awesome experience and that's probably the reason why I'm making this video. And this is the way how we used it. You create a PR, then after that you check for all the PR agent suggestions and apply if there are any relevant suggestions and only after that you assign a human developer reviewer. And this process really improved our code a lot because we were doing a lot of small refactorings on each PR and minor fixes. Hope you liked this video, warriors. Until next time, look dark.